Well, like we talked, you mentioned drones before, and I want to ask you about that as well, because yeah. with, a, with a drone, if you're flying up and you want to achieve the same type of results, how do you, how do you work with drone imagery? Okay, it's a really good point, and a lot of people get worried about the fact that um, uh, the drone is always moving. Well, yes, it is. The plain fact of the matter is now is that there are algorithms out there, and the one that we've developed actually allows us to compensate for vibration or movement. So any 32-bit requires us to take a number of images, um, five, sometimes seven. Um, our algorithm and the AI that we use allows us to overlay images pixel perfect, um, providing we've got one image that we use as our datum image. Now, that's not to say it will compensate. That will compensate with um, with the changes that you would get from the drone positioning, but it's never going to compensate for me trying to take photographs of a, a field of wheat blowing in the wind or trees, branches, and things like that. I'm not going to be able to get around that. But it does allow us to remove a large amount of what's called ghosting and also to align us so we can stack those images up over one by one. Um, we can't, it, and there's a sort of like a chicken and egg. Sometimes we can stack them up, but sometimes we have to get better texture before we can stack them up. Mm -hmm. So we've got more patterns. Photogrammetry is all about pattern recognition. Sift is all about, and the way it works is it looks for patterns and radius, radiuses of patterns and matches these up and goes, I can see that in that image, and I can see that in that image. Right. That must mean they're together, and from that I can calculate the coordinates, X, Y, Z coordinates, and the pitch roll and yaw of my camera. All these massive matrix equations I had to learn with log tables and slide rules, and now somebody just presses a button has no idea that this stuff's going on in the background. Mm -hmm. So drone footage we can. Yeah, there are limits. If it's blowing a gale, we can struggle. But providing we can get an overlap around about 10 15%, we can stack them up. Okay. Okay. There are limits to it. I'm not saying it's going to work every time. Um, but we can only shoot that in raw. And there is, an app, there, is a, there is a problem with it in that if you shoot in raw, the download mm. speed, the SD card is much slower than it is with the JPEG. So if you do, if you move on and you're moving, <laughs> you've got to download that image. So right, right. it can take longer to do, but you will know if you're going to get bad quality because um, you can just see uh, any good drone pilot who professes to be good should be looking at the conditions of light that he's got. The interesting thing about photogrammetry, as I try and remind people, is the word photo. Photo doesn't stand for photograph. It stands for light. Yes. It's from the Greek for light. Yes. And we are light engineers. We are light capturers, which is a bit of a grandiose term for pressing a button when piloting with my joystick. But and that's essentially, if I'm doing drone photography or I'm in close range or I'm using ROV to do underwater photography, that's another story completely, by the way. Yeah. But it is all about capturing light. And the better way you can capture light, I'm more about if it takes 50 minutes as opposed to 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. It's like another five minutes. Yeah, okay. it's not a big deal. Sure. It's not a big deal because it will save you much more time back in the office when you're processing it.